If you're looking to spice up your life a little bit, look no further than Pakistani chicken karahi. This stuff's so good. It's sauteed chicken in a wok that is built into a sauce and packed with spices. I had this dish suggested to me and after testing and researching for this video, it's a new favorite. It's so damn flavorful and there is no better way to enjoy it than with a handful of roti. A 240 gram serving of the chicken with two roti clocks in at 660 calories and 58 grams of protein. Oh, and did I mention that it only takes about 32 minutes to make? Hey everyone, I'm Ethan, a home cooking nerd who likes to find better ways to cook and share them with all of you. So chicken karahi is actually popular in both Pakistani and Indian cuisine. Today we're going to be focusing specifically on the Pakistani version, which someone could correct me if I'm wrong here, but the main difference that I saw between the two is that the Pakistani version uses tomatoes to kind of build a, a thicker sauce that is reduced down. Whereas the North Indian version that I saw in Madhur Jaffrey's book didn't use any tomatoes at all and it actually uses onions. So it's kind of a drier chicken stir fry. So with that being said, I've adjusted and kind of tweaked this just a little bit to make it easier for the home cook. But let's break it down. If you guys have never had this dish, you're in for something special. From the recipes and videos I've seen, such as Mark Ween's, which I would highly suggest checking out, there seems to be four base steps to a chicken karahi. First is saute meat and oil, second is cook down tomatoes, third is build flavor with spices, and fourth is reduce and finish the sauce. For number one, this is typically done with bone-in chicken pieces, but I've opted for chicken thighs to cook a bit faster. Second is building the sauce, again, typically done with fresh tomatoes, but to make it more pantry friendly, I busted out whole canned tomatoes instead, which also will cook a little faster too. Third, the spices are really to do by taste, but the most common seems to be cumin, coriander, garam masala, turmeric, and chili powder. And fourth and finally is reducing the sauce. You want it to be thick. This can be done by just evaporating it, or you can add some butter or cream to help emulsify. But by keeping those basic steps in mind, you could really make this with whatever you have. But let's run through my version. To start, I like to prep everything ahead of time, but you can definitely do parallel processing if you would like. First, get out the boneless skinless chicken thighs and just chop them into large cubes. Again, I'm using these because they cook faster, but you could really use any meat here, pork, beef, or hell, even just a bunch of vegetables. It's the same base process. Next, add two cloves of garlic and a knob of ginger to a mortar and pestle, and we're gonna crush them into a rough paste. This is what will be added right after the chicken is done with the whole tomatoes, and I've also strained off those tomatoes and just added them to a bowl. Let's gather the spices. So I'm grinding the whole ones, which for me are the cumin seeds and then the coriander seeds, and then just transferring those to a separate bowl and gathering all the other spice jars that I need. Lastly, I chop some green chilies in half, tear off some cilantro leaves, and lastly, julienne some ginger. The chilies will be added after the spices, while the cilantro and ginger will be added right at the end of cooking for a garnish of fresh flavor. And also, a note on the cilantro, this is a great dish where you can just use up the stems, so don't bother getting rid of those. And this is what our mise en place looks like. It actually only took me about 10 minutes to do everything and it makes the cooking process so much easier because you have everything contained left and you can just toss it into the wok as needed. Speaking of, to start, we're going to set the wok over high heat and I mean high heat. So this is a tip I got from J. Kenji Lopez Alt and basically you tape the top off of your gas stove and manually light it for max heat, which is gonna to form to the bottom of the wok. Now, if you don't feel comfortable doing this, just use your normal gas stove or whatever stove you've had completely as normal. To that wok, add 30 grams or about two tablespoons of peanut oil. And then once it's hot, we're gonna to toss in the chicken pieces along with a nice pinch of salt. And you wanna saute everything until the exterior is cooked and just starting to brown. Next, toss in the crushed ginger garlic paste and give it a stir and quickly follow that with the tomatoes. Now, we are looking to cook down the tomatoes and get some nice color on them. So you probably wanna let them cook for about five to 10 minutes and also start to crush them as this is what's gonna actually build the sauce. Now, sauteing tomatoes in a carbon steel wok like this will probably strip your seasoning a bit, but don't worry about it. You can just re-season it again. It's not that hard to do. And then once this is looking nice and saucy, 
it's time to add the spices. For me, this was one spoonful of cumin and a half spoonful of coriander seeds, again, that I mashed up ahead of time. Then I added a spoonful of garam masala, one spoonful of cashmere chili powder, a half spoonful of turmeric powder, a sprinkle of MSG, and about 30 cranks of black pepper. Now, feel free to play with these spices as much as you want. There's really no right or wrong answer to whatever your flavor profile is. Just have some fun with it. Once the spices are stirred in, toss in the green chilies, and now it is time to reduce the sauce. This is kind of the signature moment of the dish in my eyes, and you want it to be nice and thick, and simply put, you just keep it on high heat to let it evaporate while stirring occasionally. Now this is the point to catch up on some dishes, not that there really are many in the first place. And secondly, this dish will splatter a bit, so I like to have a paper towel ready so it doesn't just sit on my stove top making it harder to clean later. Once the sauce has thickened to your liking, you could optionally add some butter or cream. I tried both of these in my test versions, but I really found it unnecessary. To me, it's perfectly creamy and thick as is. Lastly, turn off the heat and you garnish this with cilantro and julienne ginger and give it a toss. This may seem like kind of an extraneous step, but it really makes a big difference in the final product as the garlic and cilantro really come through. Then before serving, you wanna make sure you taste the sauce and add salt as needed. It's gonna enhance all those flavors and really make them pop. Dish the karahi out onto a plate, and I'm gonna add a little more of the julienne ginger and cilantro over top for the photo. And then I also grabbed some roti that I had in the freezer. Just warm them up in the microwave for like 20 seconds. They're perfectly good to go. Let's taste test. All right, everybody, it's taste this time. I've legitimately been salivating for the past uh, way too long, waiting to eat this, um, you know, getting photos and all that. So let's just dive in. And the proper way to eat this that I've seen is with just roti in your hand, grab a little piece. It's finger food at its absolute finest. So I absolutely love this dish and I never made it before until I started doing the research and you know, testing the recipe for this video. And like I said, like this is one of my new absolute favorite dishes. It's so flavorful. The, the chicken's nice and tender. I mean, with, uh, you know, with the raw tea, like it's just a perfect way to eat and enjoy food. It's a very communal dish. Um, like you'll see, and like if you watch one of Mark Ween's Pakistani videos, you'll see like everyone gets around like a big pot of this and just gets in there with their hands and their roti, which is a really cool thing about food. But this dish, I mean, you've gotta make it. It's, it's pretty easy. I mean, it takes like 30 minutes. You know, a decent bit of that's prep work, but I mean, there's not really anything to clean up then afterwards. Like you do most of your cleaning. I just gotta clean the wok like that. That's not a big deal at all. But the flavors on this are absolutely unreal. It's really, you gotta use the spices, but then you do have to, you know, dial in the salt levels just to make sure you're letting everything enhance and get in there. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you try this recipe. Um, like I said, this stuff is absolutely addicting. Um, I'm gonna finish the rest of this plate. I will catch you all in the next one. 